This is the story of Peter Gabriel's most outstanding album. No, it's not so. It's an album that pioneered digital recording for the pop world, including a then revolutionary technique, sampling. An album deeply rooted in traditional musics, real life and the human psyche. An album that managed to mix both worlds into a new, incredible landscape. We're talking about Peter Gabriel 4, a musical cover holding a treasure of sonic ecstasy as fascinating today as it was in 1982. Hello to Patters, this is Simon Mas, your friend with a master degree in music, a passion for treasure hunting and a sad realization, sometimes you can strike gold and find the road ahead is about to get much rockier. Peter Gabriel IV, also known as Security in North America, was a tough record to make. It took Gabriel and his associates 18 months to complete. Peter felt somewhat pressured to deliver. His revolutionary mix of African influences and rock in Peter Gabriel III had started a new trend, mixing non-European folk and Western pop idiom. Albums by Talking Heads, Brian Eno, The Reformed, King Crimson and others took the ball Gabriel had created and ran with it. Peter's new album had to break new grounds if he wanted to show he could follow through the direction he was the first to point out. But wait, who am I kidding? Peter Gabriel has never been known for working fast and, with the success of Peter Gabriel III, labels just let him be. David Lord was chosen to produce the new album. He lived in Bath, which made him ideal to help Peter setting up his new home studio. When the recording facilities were ready though, progress on the album was excruciatingly slow, much to Lord's despair. I did get frustrated with him at times. There was stuff we did that I would have been more than happy keeping that Peter wanted to re-record. The pre-production stage ended with various versions of 18 songs, over 7 hours of music. In all fairness though, it wasn't just Gabriel's desire to keep all options open that slowed down the work. You see, Peter wanted to experiment with a piece of cutting-edge technology. Gabriel had got himself a Fairlight CMI for his new studio. What the hell is that, you ask? It was one of the earliest examples of a commercial sampler. And what's a sampler? It's a machine allowing you to record any sound and then manipulate it electronically. Here's a sound. And here's a major scale played sampling that sound. And here's a very quick melody. Gabriel recorded real folk instruments to manipulate them in original ways, going beyond what any regular synth would allow him to do. And stopping one beyond his show, Peter managed to record an album that made tech heads go crazy with excitement. But before I tell you more, the best moments in the album, the non-European fall connection, advice for further listening. Before I tell you all that, you need to like this video, subscribe to the channel and hear about today's sponsor, Evil Core. Do you need money? Yeah. Then it's time for you to buy into Evil Core's exclusive money-making scheme, our biggest pyramid scheme to date. A scheme that has laundered more drug money than a mafia-owned laundry in Brooklyn. And it's all legal thanks to the shortcomings of our legislative system. Yeah! Whether you need extra cash to stave off creditors or you want to alienate all of your family and friends, Evil Core's exclusive money-making scheme is the way to go. Bring it down, baby. And remember, if you don't succeed, we'll make sure you believe you're a loser and it's all your fault. Buy Evil Core. Evil Core. Don't just give us your money. Give us your soul. Hmm. 
Peter Gabriel 4 reminds me of Led Zeppelin 4 in a way. The first side of both albums is so strong that it almost eclipses a really good flip side. The rhythm of the heat is breathtaking from the very sound that starts the track and the album. Those percussions are like a cyberpunk fusion of tribal and futuristic. That's the kind of stuff Gabriel did with the Fairlight CMI. I almost hear sticks hitting something, but it doesn't sound like a real instrument if you know what I mean. It's eerie, like the story that inspired the song. Psychologist Carl Young was visiting East Africa. One evening, he heard folk drummers playing. Young felt he lost himself in the rhythm, the sound of people dancing and the warm wind. You see how Gabriel has gone to the next level with non-European music and folklore references compared to his previous work. These are now the excuse to build a discussion about the relationship of old and new, the West and the other. This otherness is predicated in many ways throughout the album. Sometimes, like in the rhythm of the heat or the family and the fishing net, it's a dark, brooming, subterranean universe. Primitive, irrational, almost Lovercraftian, if you will. The body in the flesh. In San Jacinto, it's a bond with a timeless tradition that can't be abandoned. The world of rational modernity doesn't offer anything remotely as meaningful or valuable. In Kiss of Life, this otherness is a life-affirming force, nothing threatening here, just a contagious rhythm to get lost into. But even when Western sensibility is presented by itself, Peter Gabriel returns to the old themes of psychosis, alienation and political struggles, like in I Have the Touch or Wallflowers. The best is that this discourse is not banal or trivial in any way. It's not the clean and heavily simplistic version I am offering you here. Nowhere Gabriel lectures the listeners. There are no outspoken slogans here. No straightforward narrative of good versus evil, apart from world flower, that is. In typical Gabriel's fashion, you are left with impressionistic images and dramatic music, and you must work on your own to make sense of it all. Contrary to what had happened in Peter Gabriel 3, folkloric elements are rarely used directly. There's only one example of straightforward insertion of folk sounds in the album, the Ecoma Dance Company closing the rhythm of the heat. What a stroke of genius. What a glorious closure for a track that it's worth a symphony. I took those intervals and began writing some music around them. Generally speaking though, thanks to the Fairlight CMI, the folk sounds peeping in everywhere in the album are heavily disguised. Take what I call raining sounds, starting San Jacinto, for example. The only two tracks that sound more like straightforward electropop are I Have the Touch and Shock the Monkey, songs that still broke new grounds back in the day. I remember my professor of music synthesis at Berkeley telling us how he decided to embrace samplers after listening to Shock the Monkey on the radio. He just didn't want to miss out the possibilities offered by this new technology. Alright, I think I have fanboyed enough. You obviously need to give Peter Gabriel 4 a spin as soon as possible, but what if you wanted more music in this vein? Well, my dear top patters, you just need to ask. Check out Remaining Light by Talking Heads, a 
bit more conceptual in places, but it's great stuff. And talking about conceptual, you can't go wrong with a milestone of early modern electronica. My Life in the Bush of Ghosts by Brian Eno and David Byrne. And why not? Check out King Crimson's excellent discipline too. Or Paul Simon's The Rhythm of the Saints for something more organic and less electric. But whatever you do, don't forget to subscribe to my own Telegram channel. Use the link in the description or this QR code to get extra musical ideas and content and to make sure, once a month, that you get a recap of all the storytelling I've done. Well, Tapatters, I guess this is it for now. No, wait! Why did I open the video saying that Gabriel's Road Ahead would turn rockier despite the success of 4, you ask? It's not a nice story. For a start, after 18 months being around his house, David Lord ended up having an affair with Peter's wife, Jill. They had known since their teens, and now they just fell for each other. True, Jill's marriage with Peter had grown strained through the years, but this betrayal was when the end really began. When Peter and Jill divorced in 1987, he fell into depression. But this was somewhat far away. The thing is that 4 had set in motion something that risked bankrupting Gabriel right then, in 1982. I'll tell you more in a future video. It's time to close this story now. Stay tuned for more music-related content. Until then, stay cool and keep your top hat on. Bye! Simon Mas, music you love